<clears throat> well, good morning. It's uh, Thursday the 28th or 29th, something like that. We're continuing our uh, acclimate, acclimate, I can't say it. We're acclimating the dogs to uh, back into the sheep flock. And uh, this is what they're going to get to eat today. It's about a third of a bale, um, you can see. But <clears throat> really we're just trying to get the animals to relax around each other. And um, you can see this white marema is pretty darn relaxed. And then um, Bob continues to just be a little nervous, but we're going to give him time. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, it's it's got to go the other way too, meaning some sheep are more likely to give the dogs um, trust than others. You know, there's obviously some sheep that are going to be a little warier than others, but anyway, I will unroll this, but I wanted to kind of concentrate the animals around the dogs and I'm going to sit out here for about an hour. I think it's, it's super nice. Um, it's like 35 things are starting to melt a little, so I can afford to be out here in, you know, my overalls and a hat and listen to a, a book or something while I get the dogs calmed down and get the sheep calmed down. But, uh, you know, this adult dog, she's a very unpredictable one. You know, sometimes she seems to be perfect and she locks in on the flock. And other times, like today, she went bolting across the farm and I had to go fetch her back. Yeah, I'm talking about you, pup. And so, you know, we just need to continue to put the work in, I think. So I'm going to shoe. There's some hay from when I rolled the bale down the hill that some of the warrior ones are more likely to go up and eat there. But I'm going to just shove them back down so they have to eat around the dogs. See, see this sheep right here pays no mind. And, you know, Shep is just curious. Um, she just wants to be around all the different animals. So, yeah. It's a good thing I had my GPS collar on that big dog because she went for it. She just sent it and... Uh, I had to track her down in the woods and grab her up and tell her to sit. And the good news is she does come and sit. So I, once I, once she saw me and I yelled at her, she dropped down and waited for me to come and get her. So I'll let her off the leash here in a little bit again. Now that she's kind of gotten that first, you know, jaunt out of her way. But anyway, we're gonna go shove the animals back down around this bale, and then the dogs can have some time around them. Okay. Well, good morning. I uh, I would say we had some excitement out here. Uh, I came out this morning to find my ram limping. Everyone was up tight against where the guard dogs were, and my adult guard dog has jumped the fence and is circling <laughs> the whole paddock. So the adult jumped over this fence and is out patrolling. When I came out, I just saw her kind of walk down. Oh, there she is. Hey, puppers, good job. So I have a, a ram with a limp, a hot wire that got knocked down, and a dog that jumped out. So I'm not sure what happened out here, but uh, <laughs> I don't I don't mind at all that she went out of her... Yeah, these guys want to get out too, but I don't trust... I got to work on them yet. But old puppers, she didn't like something, so she went out, and now she's making sure the coast is clear. That's a good dog. She's a she's a hard dog to understand, and she doesn't much care for anybody. But I think we had some predator issues out here last night that I didn't hear, and she dealt with it because the uh, the sheep were lit when I came out. The sheep were literally right up against in this area right here, and you can see they laid down on a lot of this hay. But um, I have to feed the animals yet, I just put a little bit out, but um, it is a relief to me to know that these guard dogs are worth it. They keep, all my animals are accounted for. He, I don't know what happened to him, but he's limping around a little bit. Um, and that adult did her job, you know. Um, it's hard for me because I've my experience with dogs so far has been 
pets where I want them to be trained and uh, be very responsive to my commands, but I understand that livestock guardian dogs need to operate independently and can't be afraid of me or they can't be afraid to go do what they need to do. See, so you can see her out there. The fence line is right where she is. Let me see if I can zoom in. See her walking out there? The fence line is out there, so she's running the whole fence line now. Let's see if we can catch her. Anyhow, I'm, I'm quite pleased with, uh, with her work. I'm going to go ahead and feed. I can hear her barking over there now. I'm going to go ahead and feed, and then uh, we'll uh, get into some training with the little pups. Well, I'm giving them a bit more hay than I normally do. This bale is very odd. Here, let me see if I can get in close and you can see it. It's got a fair bit of mold in it. Like, I think it's about 50% molded up. And uh, I'm not quite sure why that is. It was stored the same way. It came with all the other bales at the same time. But I'm gonna just give them a little bit more today so they can pick through it. Um, yeah, see, there's that good dog patrolling. I gave her a little treat for being a good guard dog. Um, she actually it trains to sit and come, so she's, I don't mind her roaming around because she's easy to catch up if I need to. These two up here, I got to work on a little bit yet. Plus they are so, look at her running around. They're so damn rambunctious. But anyway, I'm giving them a little bit more hay because this one, for whatever reason, didn't maintain the quality that the other round bales did. And, you know, the part of me that works in telecom says... Consistency is king. Efficiency is king. Uh, look at you standing on the round bale. That's my daughter's remaining lamb, the one that likes to stay with the flock. And uh, I watched her get bred by the big boy. But, uh, um, you know, efficiency and consistency are not 100% possible when you're dealing with life, bi biological life. You know, just like we'll get the odd, even though I picked out the best genetics I could find, we will get the odd sheep that doesn't fit our, our bill. And um, we'll have a great cow, you know, miscarry, an AI. These things happen. And so this is not on the uh, Doug, the guy, my neighbor who I bought the, the hay from. This is just the realities of biological life. So we're allowing for it. They're getting a lot more hay and it won't go to waste it'll turn into organic matter and they'll tromp tromp and stamp stamp it in after they've picked through it for today and, you know and it'll cost me about 15 bucks this is not the end of the world and uh as i've said over and over again the main thing farming seems to be doing for me is teaching me patience and resilience and uh yeah so it's it's just the way it is. So we'll, we're going to unroll out the rest of this and give them quite a bit extra, and then I'm going to get to training the dogs. Well, there goes Bob. I'm giving him some space to run. You know, it's all fenced in, and I got his GPS collar on. Come here, Bob. Come here, Bob. He's probably over there going to find puppers. Let's see if we can follow them. I'm taking them out. Oh, there's puppers. <laughs> they're gonna go run and play together and i'll just keep an eye on them make sure they stay in let's see if we can get there they go the two black and white dogs i'm just gonna get on the four-wheeler and kind of follow them i left the white pup here tied up just so, you know it's it's a lot to keep track of three dogs so i'm gonna worry about one and puppers will stay in I hopped on my four-wheeler to go get them that way, and they've already made a whole lap together. And they're just getting it out of their system, I think. And as long as they aren't bothering the sheep, that's all I care about. They're just making big, wide loops around this field that they're in. Smelling and peeing. 
peeing and smelling. I imagine for working dogs, being kind of cramped up is not too much fun. The nice thing is, Puppers is teaching that Bob how to mind the fence line. There's a two-wire fence over there. And I just have a lead on him in case he misbehaves, I can grab him a little easier with that, you know, it's like a 10-foot rope on him. So I'm going to let them run around and kind of get used to the rules a little bit. And the main thing I'm watching for is do they mind my fence, my electric fence? And so far they seem to be. And then, you know, if they run by the sheep, are they going to bother the sheep? And you can see the sheep aren't too sure about that Bob dog. They don't seem to mind puppers too much. They're used to her. That new dog got them all clumped up like that. So I'm going to go over and just keep an eye on them and follow them. I have a GPS here. I can see if I can. So they have a GPS collar on and I have a GPS antenna. And we can kind of just follow them as they run their tracks. All right, more to come. Hey, so for this section, I decided to do a voiceover instead of um, the rambling nonsense that I put in here. Um, basically, when I try to do too many things at once, I was watching this dog and trying to keep an eye on the other two that were out. Um, it just came out as absolute nonsense. So really what I was trying to accomplish with this white dog is to really just teach her to dial back the playfulness. Um, she doesn't want to hurt uh, any of these animals, but she does want to play with them. And so, um, you know, I'm just trying to help her understand, you know, the difference between the livestock and her role with them to protect them and, you know, what she might do with, you know, the, that other pup or the other dog. And so, um, you know, for a while I had her on a lead and I was just kind of yank, you know, yelling at her a little if she was kind of jumping at the sheep because the sheep don't know what's going on. And then I let her go out and run with the other dogs. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've got a mind to try a couple of different things. I think this kind of daily iterative time spent out running and with the livestock is going to eventually make it lose its novelty for these dogs and make it more routine which will help them be calm. And then, um, you know, once they're calm, the, sh the sheep will be calm. Um, the, the other idea that I had kicking around in my head is just to do as best I can. And then when we get to starting the rotational grazing or right at the end of feeding hay, just get them all up in my corral and, you know, force them to acclimate with each other and sit out there and make sure the dogs aren't being crazy. But um, and just let them settle down around each other over the course of a couple of days and feed hay in the corral. Um, I might get there if, if this doesn't do the job the way that I'd like it to, um, meaning if I can't get them out consistently with the flock over the course of the next, you know, couple of weeks or months, then I'll, I'll just kind of do a force <laughs> acclimatization where they're, they're all jammed together and nobody can go anywhere, um, you know, and I might have to take a day off of work to just sit out there and make sure the dogs are behaving themselves and everything normalizes because... You know, it's going to be key. I'm, you know, with the new property that we're developing over at Doug's, these dogs have to be attached and bonded to these sheep. There's coyotes at my place, as you saw in this video, and there's definitely coyotes out at Doug's. And I just need these dogs to do their job the way, um, you know, they're designed for. So um, if anybody has any bright ideas or uh, tips for getting this accomplished, um, I would love to hear it. Um, because I know it's generally instinctual and not a training mechanism, but, um, I, I, I feel like I've probably flubbed it a little by monkeying around with their integration with the U flock. I moved them into the Rams this summer, um, and, uh, you know, just not being consistent with their treatment, you know, and so I'm going to do my best and any, any helpful t advice would be most welcome. So, yeah, I've talked to my neighbor. It sounds like the coyotes are out looking for food so this is definitely an important uh thing and it's timely uh you know those work i'm putting into the dogs all right have a good day everyone